All right, we'll go ahead and open up in prayer. And um, as uh, we, we, we always have an audience, but we'll see if we have a uh, audience that will join in um, with our uh, collaboration. But um, nonetheless, we'll go ahead and start and begin with prayer. <clears throat> Father, we thank you, we bless you, we praise your holy name. Thank you for this opportunity to share your word, to learn more about you. We're relying totally upon your Holy Spirit to open up our minds and our understanding so we can comprehend your word in a brand new way. Thank you that your word declares that where there is two or three gathered together in your name, you would be here in the midst. And so we give this time over to you. We pray and we're asking you for fresh revelation from heaven and it is our bold declaration that we will not just be hearers of your word but we will be doers of your word in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen all right all right so we had a great week and a lot of things a lot of things going on and as always we're trying to find a way to connect with uh, um, as many people as possible by any means necessary whether it's radio whether it's in-person worship services whether it's on uh social media, um, Facebook, uh, our YouTube channel, website, our mobile app, whatever the case may be. I, these are times where you have to be creative. <laughs> and uh, it is not just churches, it's everywhere. It's schools, businesses, it's just, it's a different time for everybody. But um, we have to find a way to uh, give, get God's word to people because um, the word of God is essential. So um, thank God for this platform um, you can argue that God made social media for uh, his purposes. <laughs> so we can use this tool to uh, help get people saved and, and help people uh, get spiritually fed. And so we thank God for um, the platform to do so. And Sister Liz, you are a rock star. Like I said, you run circles around a lot of people. You picked up on technology and you ran with it. So... <laughs> That's saying a lot compared to some. So tonight I want to talk about um, um, something I feel God put on my heart with the time we're in right now. And, and that is just the fact that we're in dangerous times and, and we have to trust God for our safety. Um, and I think safety has become a priority to every person, individual, not just in our nation, but in our world because you know there's so many dangerous things going on right now you know just this week i saw a, a clip uh, about there was a politician and this politician was at a conference was on the stage sharing some ideas about policy and out of nowhere someone jumped on the stage um right up in this politician's face and snatched the microphone right out of this person's hand and it caught everyone by surprise because the person jumped up on the stage so quick. And obviously after the fact, you know, hindsight is always 20, 20. They, they, they were like, we did not have, we didn't have enough security. <laughs> like this could have been so much worse. Uh, thank God the politician wasn't hurt. Uh, again, now shortly after the guy jumped on stage and took the microphone out of the individual's hand, about three or four guys came and grabbed the guy and, and took him off stage. They handled him real quick, quickly, but it, it could have been real bad. And so they're rethinking things now because we know we're in a politically charged environment. We're still going through, you know, the election. There are a lot of angry people. <clears throat> there are a lot of emotional people. And so safety is a, is a real concern. You know, in addition, we know we're still, you know, working through the pandemic. Um, over 240 people almost have passed away. So safety, again, is a, is a priority. Um, just last week, about, actually about two weeks ago, someone pulled me aside and told me about a particular store in Somerville, by the way, and told me to be cautious because at this store, they had a lot of instances of, or I can say a lot of people who were in the know were saying there were major concerns about human trafficking there, that people at this store were grabbing small children. They say, hey, make sure you keep your children close to you. I quickly relayed that information to, to Carolyn 
And um, because we're in dangerous times. And so more than ever before, you know, as Christians, as believers, we have to believe God for our safety. Uh, we have to trust God to keep us safe um, from harm. And we have to find out how to do so. So I want to share just two things very briefly uh, about how we can trust God for our safety. And then I want to open it up for some discussion and then get some ideas and thoughts from you all. So two things I believe we can do to uh, believe God to keep us safe amidst everything we're going through is um, we primarily have to claim the promises of God for our safety. Now, say, how do we do that? We do so by faith. Um, there are a myriad of promises, um, a lot of things God tells us he would do for us to keep us safe. And so we have to claim those promises as our own. You know, the, um, the promises of God are not automatic. You know, um, we just can't click our, you know, you know I, I dream of genie, just <laughs> move your head up and down. And then it's, it's, it's not magic, you know, uh, God's word isn't magic, but we have to claim it by faith. I believe that the promises of God are similar to an insurance policy. Um, we all know you can pay your premiums on time. Um, you can have awesome insurance, but if you don't make a claim, they're not sending you any money. <laughs> If you don't make a claim, you don't get any services. If you don't make a claim, all of these benefits you have, you won't be able to experience it because there's a process that you have to go through. Even if you pay your, your premium on time for the last 10 years, if you don't make a claim, the benefits or the services that they're willing to provide for you will never come to pass. And spiritually, I believe we have to do the same thing. We have to lay claim of the promises of God about our safety. We have to speak them over our lives. We have to meditate on them. We have to believe them, confess them, and act like it is so. We have to uh, confess and believe God for his angels to protect us. You know, the Bible says a thousand shall fall by our side, 10,000 by our right hand. It should not come near us. We should ask God to keep us safe on the road. We have to ask him to keep us safe when we're in unfamiliar places. And so we have to trust God to do so for us. His angels, his protections, his, his very presence that abides and dwells on the inside of us, um, uh, the providential hand of God in our lives, how he just uh, goes ahead of us and paves the way for us. So we have to claim that as our own. And I, don't be I, I, I believe that if we don't claim, lay claim of these promises, it's not gonna happen, you know, because it's not automatic. Um, we're people of faith and we tap into these things exactly that way, by faith. And the second thing, and I, I like to harp on this, because I think it doesn't get enough um, credence or we don't talk enough about it in church is that not only do we have to claim these promises, but we, we have to have wisdom. We, we, we you know, um, that can't be overstated. Uh, Proverbs 4, 7 says wisdom is the most important thing. And so um, to me, wisdom is learning how to be cautious, learning um, how to uh, be safe, um, Wisdom is making sound choices, you know, doing research, investigating things, studying things out, finding out as much as we can about situations. It's uh, being prudent. It's, it's using discretion. Um, we, we have to be wise. I tell people all the time, you know, why would God give you a brain if he didn't want you to use it? I mean, we just got to be smart about some things. You know, we're in a pandemic, you know, be smart, be socially distanced you know, wear your mask, you know, put hand sanitizer on. I mean, that's just wisdom. I don't see how in the word, I, I, again, I'm a person of faith. I grew up on faith and healing. But again, the Bible says wisdom is more important than everything else. I can make the argument, hey, wisdom is more important than love, than prayer, than faith. You say, how can you say that? Because you never have faith unless you're wise enough to know that you need faith. <laughs> I mean, you, you never pray unless you're smart enough to know you need to talk to God in prayer. So Again, the Bible says a fool says in his heart that there is no God. You have to have wisdom to even pursue God. So wisdom is more important than anything else. And so therefore, we just have to be smart uh, about things, you know, I, you know, because we're in a politically charged time. I mean, you, you, it may not be good for you to hang out at night, three o'clock in the morning in an unfamiliar place. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, I tell you the importance of wisdom and just, just you know, being smart about things. We, uh, I'll tell you two instances, and I'll open it up for discussion. I know about a couple of weeks ago, we had fraud on our, one of our church accounts and um, took a lot of money out of our account. And uh, banks said, hey, you guys weren't at fault. 
obviously. He said, you, you got to change your password. You know, you got to change your password. I said, consider it done. He said, because you got, it's a dangerous time. You got cyber criminals out there. Um, and I had some notifications even, you know, per, on a personal front. You know, I've already about halfway done, you know, doing so. I mean, you can't blame the devil for these things. I mean, some things we just have to set up a, a fortress of protection. And some of how we do that is through the choices and the decisions we make. I can remember years ago when I was working at a bank and they would always tell us because again, a bank is a place people <laughs> were, I mean, it's a target area because of people rob banks. They would tell us on the way home, go a different way home every day. He said, people don't need to know where you're going at. They don't, they don't need to know your, 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 your whereabouts. They don't need to be able to follow you. They would tell us, you know, be smart about it. Go a different way to work every day if you can, you know? You know, change up your routine. Don't let people know exactly where you're going to be every single day. And so they would give us these little keys, these, these you know, um, things we can do just to keep us ourselves safe. And so we have to make sure that we're doing this. I'll say this one more time. Uh, I'll say one more thing, rather, that I remember um, years ago, I was uh, at a school, a traditional school, and, you know, the, every so often, especially during prom weekend, the police officers come by and they talk to the kids about the dangers of drinking and driving. Um, and I'll add to that while I'm on the subject, you don't need to drink and drive. You don't need to be sleeping and drive. You don't need to be on heavy medication and driving. But he said, that, uh, he talked about the importance of wearing the seatbelt. Again, I know Christians, they say they believe God, they're not gonna wear a seatbelt. That's another subject, okay? But um, he was saying that, you know, of all the accidents I went to, now there may be some outliers, but he said, I never went to an accident and saw someone pass away that had their seatbelt on. He said, everyone that I saw perish in an auto accident, he said, now, this is just my experience. He said, none of them had their seatbelt on. So he said, what's the message? Be smart, wear your seatbelt. And so as Christians, we have to understand this. We have to take care of the spiritual. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 4, 7, we got to take care of the, the natural as well. We got to be wise. And so uh, and this time, especially with the pandemic, with, uh, you know, the politically charged atmosphere, with a lot of things going on, potential riots in the next 70 days leading up to the inauguration, um, with, uh, you know, not realizing and want, knowing how long the pandemic is going to last, we have to be safe. We do so by faith. We do so by wisdom as well. So let me ask you a few questions here. We open it up for discussion. You know, do you think, hey, Sister Mixon, good to hear, good to see you. Uh, do you think that Christians in particular, do you think that we're sometimes out of touch when it comes to safety? Do you think we have a, Christians now, I'm talking about Christians, do we have a difficult, uh, a difficult time? Let me see. All right, good, I'll make sure I can, that's how chat come through. Do, do you think we have a difficult time assessing Danger? What do you all think? I think Christians have a have a hard time. Um, do you think we're kind of out of touch when it comes to safety and, and, and our ability to assess danger? I'm trying to wait to see if anybody else going first. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You can go ahead. Well, uh, some sometimes I think we do. Sometimes, sometimes I think you know, like you said in the beginning. You know, we have to exercise our faith for things, but also it's important that we do use common sense. You know about certain things, and I I do believe that you know as Christians, well, we are we are all human beings, but sometimes as Christians, we can you know put our faith before our common sense, you know? And I mean, God does want us to exercise our faith and our belief in him, but you know, he don't want us to just walk right into danger. If we see danger, or if we know about it or hear about it, you know, he wants us to also be cautious before we do anything. I don't know if I'm wording it correctly, but that's my opinion. 
Oh. Actually, if there's a proverb that says that that you know a fool sees danger and doesn't and just passes right on by, <laughs> he he just ignores it. And so, you know, if we see situations that potentially can, you know, harm us or potentially be dangerous. I mean, we, we, we need to try to avoid it. I mean, we, we just, we, you know, sometimes we call it red flags. And mm -hmm. how many times in our lives have we ignored the red flags and we were waiting for an audible voice. We were waiting for God to speak to us openly, but then all the signs were there that, you know, we probably didn't need to do something. <laughs> so here again, wisdom is the principal thing. And a lot of times we ignore these signs of these red flags. And sometimes, you know, and I've been there like, God, why didn't you tell me? And they're like, like, hey, you know, you, know you, you, you have to be able to interpret and discern situations. I've given you the ability to do that. And in addition, we, 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 we sometimes, you know, need to stop to pray about things as well. Sometimes we're in a hurry before we do things, but we really need to analyze a lot of situations we need to research things, get as much information, you know, before we make decisions about our health. I think in this day and age, especially because we're in a pandemic, we have to measure risk. Um, you know, how risky is, will it be if I do this, that, and the other? There was a, um, a pastor who, um, he was at a church in Florida, and um, I think his auditorium probably seats like about 1,200 or so, and, you know, they were virtual um, for, for several months. And, you know, he was monitoring, you know, the virus in his city, of course. And he said, what we're going to do for one Sunday only, you know, because 300 people, that would be about, you know, 20, they, you know, the CDC is saying, you know, having buildings 25% capacity. He said, we're going to try to bring in 300 people. You got to make reservations. We're going to do it for one Sunday. And then after that, we'll see how it goes and then decide whether or not we're going to do it again. And I think that was pretty smart because you just don't know, you know, we, we haven't been here before. You don't know what to expect. And so he says, I'm not going to promise you that we're going to have service next week too. He said, we're going to look at the situation. We're going to see how things go. We're going to make sure things don't go wrong or see what, what potential problems we run into. And after we gather all that information and all that data, we'll make a decision on whether or not we're going to do this again. Are we going to go back to virtual or are we going to try this again, you know, at the same number or will we try it again and, and have even less people to come? I think that's how we have to work through things nowadays. And I think we have to do that for a lot of our decisions in life about our family, our health, you know, go to the doctor, getting a second opinion, you know, trying to be proactive about your health, you know, to be safe from, you know, things that are out there that could potentially harm our bodies. And so we, I think sometimes, I think sometimes Christians, we, because sometimes it, we, it does seem like we live in an alternative, an alternate universe and, and where we're out of touch and, and, you know, so heavenly minded, no earthly good. And sometimes we're just not smart about certain things in the name of faith. And I, I love a book I read years ago, Dr. Price, Fred Price, you know, one of my mentors and his book called Faith, Foolishness and Presumption. And sometimes we have faith, but other times we're just doing stuff that is, that is foolish. It, it is just downright. There's no other way to say it. It's foolish, and sometimes we're being very presumptuous as well. So uh, I, I think you made some good points there, but there is a scripture that really um, talked about what you had mentioned about you just can't see danger and just keep right on walking. Any thoughts there, Sister Mix? I don't know if you can hear me. I saw you sent a chat through. Maybe you're not available, able to talk right now, but I saw, I saw you message us as well. But um, besides, besides praying, what, what do you think Christians can do to remain safe in this politically charged atmosphere? I mean, everyone agrees that the next 70 days can potentially be dangerous. What do you think we as Christians need to do? What can we do to be safe? <laughs> I'm here. Oh, I hey, Sister Mixon. I was fighting with the phone to take the mute button off. <laughs> okay. But Any no. thoughts about the previous question about, do you think Christians are, do you think sometimes we're a little out of touch, so we have a hard time assessing danger as, as believers? Yes, yeah, sometimes. I 
think sometimes we maybe when we don't get the answer we really want then we want to sign and things like that right to, right um to to convince us not to do something that we probably know we shouldn't for some some way or the other sometimes it's just with like um a scripture that people hear is because of lack of knowledge we just don't know yeah you know uh, yeah when you really no. want something, you can do it mentally, but when you don't really know, you try to uh, get what you want out of it either way, and it doesn't always work out. I agree. I think a lot of times um, that is true. We we um, we just don't have enough knowledge. Sometimes we don't have enough information, and then we run off the little that we do know, and um, Sometimes we may I, we may be sincere, or we're sincerely wrong, and we just don't have enough facts. And I think that's a part of wisdom. Um, speaking of this politically charged atmosphere, do you, do you think anything as Christians? I mean, how do y'all feel? Is there anything we could do to be safe during, <laughs> keep ourselves safe during these next seventy days? Any thoughts there? This is this this topic is all over the media. <laughs> Use wisdom, I guess. I mean, I mean, I guess if you know someone is upset about something, not to press their buttons purposefully, or you know, try to be proactive in what you see and eventually see what's going on around. I think we do have to do that. I mean. We just, I know Carol said something to me about you got to be careful how you talk politics with people. Um, you got to know who, you, who you're dealing with. And, and like you said, a system mixing, you, you have to kind of stay away from them landmines, those, some, those hot button topics. If, if you know someone, probably can't have a rational conversation about politics, you probably need to talk about something else. Any, any thoughts, any thoughts to your system, Liz? <laughs> Well, I do agree with that. You know, you can't speak with everybody or talk with everybody about, you know, politics for sure during this time, you know. Sometimes you gotta keep your opinion to yourself and whoever you vote for, you need to keep that to yourself also. But here again, you know, it's where we have to exercise caution, you know, be careful where we go at. Like you said before, you know, we can't stay out on the street till four day in the morning or whatever, you know, we have to have a set time to go and come, you know, make sure you know where you're going at, where you at, who you're associating with also. So it's something because, um, <laughs> You do got to stay in contact. Um, I know my sister. There was a storm in, in Miami, and um, and and just this is why, especially now, you have to have some a support system around you. You need to have some people in your life that, if they don't hear from you on a regular basis, they gonna check on you. You know, and I know there was a storm in Florida, and my dad called and he's like, "Yeah, hey, I heard I had heard from your sister." And um, she, no one's answering the phone. I was like, oh, we need to figure out what's going on. And fi we finally found out that the you know, storm didn't really impact them that much. And um, they were outside. They just missed the phone call. But um, I think that's the kind of time we're in. I mean, you, you have to have accountability mm -hmm. partners, some prayer partners, some family members, friends mm -hmm. who, who are going to know about your whereabouts. Um, I think that's just kind of where we are. And like you said, we have to be wise about where we go, who we talk to. We just, we just, I hate to say, we can't be stupid about certain things. I mean, it's just, I mean, you mess around, you can, you can get hurt, lose your life, you know, tell our kids these things, you know, don't talk to strangers and, you know, don't take food from everybody. You know, they you grew up and they say, you, you go to an event, you know, if you drop your, you, you leave your cup, you know, if, if you leave and forget about it, don't, don't pick it up again. And drink. I mean, all those things were, were good advice, you know, <laughs> so, um, and I think we can't negate these things in the name of faith, you know, so, and especially now. Um, so we talked about some of all the promises of God, um, but 
they're in the Bible about our safety. Why do you think God wants to keep, keep us safe? Why do you think he wants to keep us safe, especially during this time? Well, I think it's not only during this time. I think God wants us to be safe at all times. We don't want to see anything happen to his children. We are his children, and um, you know he don't want anything bad um, come upon us. And sometimes, not sometimes, because I think all the time, you know, he sends his angels before us to guide and protect us when we don't even know, you know, when we don't even see dangers half of the time. But, you know, God sees it ahead of time. And sometimes he do sends his ministering angels to go before us, go with us, and to surround us, you know. <laughs> Talk to Sister Mitchell, and I'm going to share some things. I want to give everyone an opportunity to talk. Why do you think God wants to keep us safe? Can you repeat the question? Yes, yeah, so and what you know, we have all kinds of promises of God, uh, promises in the Bible about our safety. Um, why do you think God wants to keep his his children safe, especially now? I mean, do you, you know, why do you think this would be a priority for God? Um, because he's a good shepherd. Absolutely. I think um, that if you if you are the shepherd or the leader, your your flock is always the priority, mm -hmm. and 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 our safety depends on his ministry, because we are his arms and his legs. We are the light. We are the salt of the earth, you know? Um, without our, us being here safe and functional, that that um, ministry and that mission is affected. So we're, we are a part of his plan, and that's why he would want us to be safe. Absolutely. You, you hit, the thing is, you know, both of you talk about, you know, number one, God is our father. And yes, he is that good shepherd. And, you know, his job is to watch over the sheep and, and to ultimately keep us safe. And I think this is, it sounds very simple. I think this is a big um, thing to discuss because almost every Christian believes that God can, that he is able. But a, a lot of times we struggle with uh, whether he will or is it his will for us to be safe? Is it his will for him to do certain things for us? We all know he's able. We know he can. But I think we have to believe that God wants me to be safe. He wants me to be protected because he loves me. He cares about me. He is my shepherd. Shepherd watches. They watch over their sheep. And, you know, the older I get, I do realize um, that, yes, heaven is the destination, but make no mistake about it, God wants us here on earth. You know, he wants us here on earth. Remember, and I give you a scriptural reference, you know, first of all, like you mentioned, the great, there's a, a great commission, there's a task at hand um, that he's calling on us to do so. Um, he's the head, we're the body. There's a great commission. We're in partnership with God. He, he wants us to be here, you know, um, we got to put heaven on hold per se. No one trying to check out of here early, but the fact of the matter is the work is here. Paul says to depart and be with Christ is awesome. It's, it's better. He said, but it's more expedient that I stay here. Why? You got a lot of dying men and women who don't know Christ. Not only that, there's a lot of people in our family, in our inner circle. God can use us to impact their lives. You know, family members, children, parents, cousins, aunts, and uncles, you know, uh, no one lives to himself or dies to himself. We're, we're, we're essentially living for other people. You know, our lives are supposed to be that living letter, that living epistle read and known of all men. And so we're here to make an impact. We're here to, um, so people can see Christ on the inside of us. And so, you know, he wants to keep us safe for that very reason. A lot of people depending on us and a lot of people's faith is, in, are, is impacted by the faith we possess. And so God wants us to be around here for a long period of time. He wants us to, the Bible says he, he wants to satisfy us with long life. And so we have to believe and be totally convicted that, you know what, 
in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of social unrest and political upheaval, God wants to keep me and my family safe. That's the will of God for me. Hey, it may not be the will of God for the next person, but it's the will of God for me. And, and that's the kind of attitude you have to have. You got to claim that as your own. There can't be any doubt, any wavering. You have to know that God will uh, bend over backward, will move heaven and earth to keep me safe. You, you have to know that. And I think that's the kind of confidence we have to have in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of, of dangerous times. No, God has angels around me. They've been sent forth to minister for me. And uh, he's going he's gonna to do whatever is necessary to keep me safe, whether it's on the job, whether it's on the highway, uh, whether it is in an a environment that I did not know was going to be that dangerous. Um, he's going to have my back. And we have to trust and believe that God is going to do that for us. You know, I heard a preacher say this the other day, and I asked you the question, you know, about our whereabouts and when we go different places. Do you think every, we need to pray um, and ask God to keep us safe? Every time we get into the car, every time we get onto the airplane, every time we go to work, every time we go hit the street, especially in, in, in the, the current environment, do you think we need to pray every time we do these things? What do you think? Yes, indeed. Absolutely. We need to ask God to be a fence all around us each and every day. Awesome. awesome. Mr. I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. I think we, I think sometimes we, we, we take for granted how dangerous certain things are that we do every day. Um, you know, a lot of people are afraid to fly on airplanes. You know, I know it's actually statistically more dangerous to drive in your car. And we do that all the time. <laughs> and, but we, we just perceive it to be safer. I mean, people go to work and they don't come back. I mean, they, they die at work. You got people, you know, active shooters, everything. We just, and right now, I think we think more about praying um, because, you know, everything's all over the media about how dangerous it can be. I mean, we're in the middle, you know, dealing with the virus. Um, I absolutely believe it, it is a good practice to uh, pray every time. We, we can't assume that things are just going to be okay. You know, tomorrow's not promised. We, we should pray and talk to God when we go on trips, we travel, we go down the road, we go to the job, when we, you know, do activities or whatever the case may be. I think we will agree that you can never go wrong praying and asking God to keep you safe. You know, sometimes I... And I don't know, this is just the way my mind thinks because, you know, I, you, you hear about certain things happening, even sometimes with Christians. And this, this is just, it's just me now, but, um, you know, tragedies are things happening. And I mean, sometimes I wonder, I said, Hey, did that person take the time? To, I mean, did they forget to pray? Do you, I'm, I just kind of how I think. I just, you know, I, when you try to make sense of everything, you know, you, you wonder. Um, I, I remember, I'll, I'll say this, this is why it came to mind. Um, I know Sister Mixon, you can relate. I remember when I was the school you at, you know, I was working there as well. And then we used to have a, a little bus that would take us up to work. And um, I mean, just it's a straight shot, 30 minute drive. And it just is easy, no traffic hardly any lights. It's just an easy drive. And then one day the bus driver said, um, man, I got to have my cataracts removed. And we were, by the time when we were driving, it was nighttime. She said, cause I can't see, I got to have my cat. And I was like, what in the world are you doing <laughs> driving right now? I was like, my goodness. And then she was swerving on the road. And, and I'll be honest with you, ever since she said that, um, either A, I was driving myself, or B, um, I was praying <laughs> because um, I assumed she had great eyesight. I assumed I was on a safe, you know, vehicle or I was in a safe situation. But the more she spoke, the more I saw, like, this ain't a very safe situation. So I was praying. And my point is sometimes we just assume things are safe, things are all right. 
and and we neglect prayer where sometimes if we hadn't assessed the situation sometimes we don't realize how dangerous of a situation we can be and I, I see this all the time in relationships as well you know the red sometimes people don't even realize i've heard some stories recently people in abusive relationships they just they, they didn't even realize at the time you know that um they were in that dangerous of a situation so we 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 have to pray we have to talk to god we have to use wisdom to be cautious to be prudent you know to be aware um especially now especially now these are dangerous times and so we have to tap into we got to use our faith we also have to use some wisdom as well any any questions any comments you have any thoughts or any prayer requests All right, all right, all right. Well, just give you a couple of announcements. Um, we don't have a whole lot, but um, of course we'll be uh, for the foreseeable future. We we thank God because we're we're um, we're worshiping in Ridgeville, twelve thirty four at three p.m., and um, we will be there until we can <laughs> figure out how how things are going to go. I, I just talked about it. We we're just trying to figure out the safest way to keep things going and keep disseminating God's word and, and, and keeping the risks down. So appreciate you all worship with us either in person or just virtually. We'll continue to send out the, um, um, the online children's ministry. We got a lot of great feedback from that. The parents are enjoying that. Uh, we'll continue to send out um, the Bible study replay rebroadcast the Sunday services rebroadcast and we've had such a great response on social media we'll probably be I'll probably be doing like a little wisdom of the week um, connection as well because um, we've been getting a lot of followers and and of course our radio broadcast we've been getting some wonderful wonderful response from radio broadcast people are calling buying CDs it's been it's been great um, so you know God has really been faithful to us and I, I really appreciate what um, he's allowed us to do. And, and I really appreciate everyone who's connected to this ministry. I think we have great people and I can't be overstated. Anyway, we'd like to close out in prayer um, as we, um, as we um, move forward and, and with a focus on, on trusting God for our safety. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, and we bless you and we praise you. Thank you so very much for the covenant that we have with you. You promised to keep us safe. You you promised to keep us under your wing. You said, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so therefore, we continue to stay in your presence. We pray, we invite you into our world, and we allow your presence to keep us safe from harm. We claim every promise about our safety, about our healing, about our deliverance, Lord, and we'll be proactive and pray in advance about things that we know about or even the things we don't know about as well. And so therefore we dispatch angels around us, around our family members right now in the name of Jesus. So Satan won't be able to touch or affect anything around us. And so God, we claim that as our own thousands shall fall on our side, 10,000 on our right hand, it will not come near us. And Father, you give your angels charge over us and they'll keep us in all of our ways when we're on the highway, when we're on the flyways, at work or at home. Lord, keep us safe, keep our families safe, keep our church family safe as well. And so for that, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, y'all be blessed. Have a great week, and we will see you next week. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all take care now. All right.